Welcome back students. We have completed unit 2 in the last lecture. Today we are going to start unit 3 that is embedded firmware design. Unit 2 is about embedded hardware design. Okay. Unit 3 is about embedded firmware means code, software. Okay. At the source code. Embedded firmware design. Okay. So the topics are so what are the approach in order to write some uh, code not include some software in the hardware. So what are the design approaches? What are the design approaches? Embedded firmware design approaches. Second one is uh, development languages. In which, in which language we can develop the software that is firmware. So what do you mean by ISR concept? Interrupt service routine. Interrupt service routine concept. So what are the sources for interrupt? Please we will study about what is an interrupt. Okay. What do you mean by internal interrupt, uh, external interrupt, next uh, software interrupt, hardware interrupt, and what are the sources for interrupt, next uh, interrupt servicing mechanism, so the, after the interrupt is being generated, so how can we service the interrupt, what we have to do, next handling multiple interrupts at the same time, so a number of interrupts occur at the same time, okay, how we will handle, okay, how can we give the priority. So, so four interrupts came at a time. So, which interrupt you will prefer? Not you, means a processor or a controller. Next, DMA, dynamic memory access or direct memory access. Next, means accessing the memory without uh, uh, sending the request to the controller. You can directly access the memory. Okay, no need of accessing the processor, taking the processor request or the control request. Can directly access the memory that concept. That's a device driver programming. Device driver, okay, which used to run some device on the uh, processor or a controller or any embedded system, okay. Some, for example, USB device. In order to run the USB device, uh, uh, there is some software already included in the uh, respective operating system. Or in order to run some devices, okay, run some printer. Printer, we need to install some software. That's a device driver software. It's a device driver programming. How can we write a program for the device driver? It's concepts of C versus embedded C and compiler versus com cross compiler. Okay. What are the concepts of <coughs> C? What is concepts of C? And the difference between C and embedded C? Difference between a compiler and a cross compiler. Okay. Compiler, compiler is platform dependent. Cross compiler is platform independent. So, uh, we will give, go through that anyway while dealing with the, dealing with the topic. So, first topic is uh, embedded firmware design approaches. Embedded firmware design approaches. We will deal with this topic today and we will uh, discuss some uh, some information about embedded firmware developed languages. Okay. So, first topic embedded firmware design approaches. Okay. So, the firmware design approaches for embedded product is purely dependent on the complexity, complexity of the functions to be performed and the speed of operation required etc. So, in order to uh, develop some embedded system, we have to select the hardware and we will select the respective form. Okay. So, in order to write some code, okay, in order to write some code or in order to develop some software, embedded software, okay. First, we will select the complexity. Okay, so how complex is the, is the application? How complex is the application, and what is the speed of operation required? So, depending upon the complexity, means uh, oh, there will be some simple applications like interfacing some keyboard. That's it. So, interfacing some keyboard, and we will read the inputs from the keyboard. This very simple operation. For that, if the complexity is very very less. For the type of application, we just write some program, simple program, okay, that is, that is enough. And the speed, okay, speed, for the speed, for the respective speed, we will select the respective hardware, and the respective firmware. See, firmware, we can write, or we can select an operating system, okay, we can select an operating system as a firmware, or we can just write the code in embed C, okay, or any, some high level language. Not to run the respective embedded system. Okay, here embedded firmware design approaches means first one is the firmware design approach. Okay, <coughs> firmware design depending upon the complexity and the cost, we have to select the 
formed. Okay, that's one thing. Next, there are basically two approaches. Okay, for embedded form by design, there are first one. First one, conventional procedural based firmware design. Conventional procedural based firmware. That is simply writing a program. Okay, that is we are used to call as a super loop model. We'll go through that super loop model. Second one is embedded operating system based design. Okay, one is see in simple one is writing a program in embedded C or any high level language. Second one is using an operating system because as the complexity increases, we can't write a program for all the uh, n number of inputs. Okay, it may take some time and the speed of operation get decreases. So, in order for the complex programs for the complex applications, okay, which used to handle n number of uh, signals, interrupts, inputs, outputs, generally we will go for an operating system. An embedded system. So. We can deal embedded firmware design in two ways. That is, one is super loop model, that is conventional procedural based firmware design. Second one is a embedded operating system based design. So, one we will simply write a program, second one will be go for an operating system. Okay. So, in that, the super loop based approach. Okay. The super loop based approach. A super loop based informal development approach is adopted for applications that are not time critical. That are not time critical and where the response time is not so important. Response time is not so important. Okay, so here is super loop based development approach. This is intended for applications which are not time critical. Not means time critical means the task may finish okay not at the respective time okay it may finish before the time it may, it may finish with some delay but the task will finish so such type of tasks are said to be not time critical there are time critical applications means there will be real time applications okay task the task must finish at the respective time only it must finish at 945 okay so, those are said to be critical applications. So, these are not the super loop based approaches are not time critical. Okay. The task will finish at some point of time. Okay. With some delay. And the response time is not that much important. After giving, after typing the letters in a keyboard, with some delay, they may appear on the display. Okay. Or with some delay, the respect to read operation can occur. Okay. So, those are said to be the response time is not. That much important. Okay. This is with respect to super loop model. Next. In super loop based model, the firmware execution follows like this. Okay. First one. Configure the common parameters and perform initialization for various hardware components, memory, register. Configuration required. So, what is the memory we are taking? What are the hardware components? What are the registers? Okay. This is just your configuration, initialization. Next. Start the first task and execute it. Next, execute the second task, execute the to next task, and the number of tasks will be executed. Next, execute the last defined task. Next, jump back, jump back to the first task and follows the jump back to the first task and follows the same flow. Iterative, iterative. Okay, initialization, first task, second task, third task, last task, last task, and jump back to the again first task. Okay. So, it will be in a loop, okay, no, like a while loop, okay, it used to go on executing the same program again and again, okay, this is just a firmware approach. Further, there is a code here, For, from the firmware execution sequence, it is obvious that the order in which the tasks to be executed are fixed and they are hard coded in the code itself, so these are fixed, okay. According to the program, according to the firmware, these tasks will be executed and again the first task to last task. First task to last task. Okay, this will be in, in iterating mode. So, we can visualize the operation sequence listed above in terms of a C program as given, given here. Okay, like void main. Okay, void main configurations. Like in first step configurations. Here the configurations are given. First step. Okay, configurations. 
uh, and initializations. I have given a while loop here. That is a while of one. Okay. You know, as task one, task two, and so on. Some task up to task n. Okay. And these tasks will be in since they are in a while loop. Okay. They will be keep on doing the same task again and again. One to n and again one to n and to one to n. Infinite loop. Okay. Just to keep on in this fashion. This approach is also referred as so called loop based approach. This is nothing but a so called loop based approach. Let us see. Okay. So simply so called loop based approach means there are two approaches. One is so called loop model conventional procedural based approach. Second one is a OS based. Then so called loop model. These are for so called loop model we can choose a non critical application and where the response time is not so important. And the execution flow will be like this. For that we have considered a just a C program. Okay. In that it keep on iterating the same task again and again. Now, now, so since the tasks are running inside an infinite loop, infinite loop, the only way to come out of the loop is either a hardware reset or a interrupt assertion. So they keep on iterating the loop again and again. So how to come out of the loop? Okay. How either giving a hardware reset by giving some reset, hardware reset, or giving an interrupt. By giving a hardware reset or giving an interrupt, you can come out of the loop. Okay. The so called loop based design does not require an operating system since there is no need for scheduling which task is to be executed and assigning a priority to each task. So, the so called loop based approach means writing some firmware, writing some source code. Okay. So, for that, scheduling is not required. Okay. We can't use scheduling and we can't insert priorities. Okay. So, for that, it does not require an operating system. Does not require an operating system. If there is any scheduling, time slicing, okay, assigning priorities for dealing n number of interrupts, inputs for the respective input, what the input we have to choose. For this complex task, generally we will go for an operating system. So it does not require here in so called loop. Next, this type of design is deployed in low cost embedded products. Okay, and products where response time is not time critical, I have discussed. Next, typical example of a so called loop based product is a video game. Okay. That's a video game containing some keypad and display. No, uh, we used to play some video games. Okay, some car racing, etc. Okay, just we need to, we need to give input from the keyboard, which uh, where the aspect of action is displayed on the okay visible on the display. For the dedicated applications, simple applications. Okay, those are not time critical. The response may low. Okay, for the low cost embedded systems, we will generally go for a so called loop based model. The drawback in this approach is any failure in any part of the single task will affect the total system. So if there is a bug in the program, okay, the total system may crash, okay, and the failure uh, will will be affected. Okay, the failure in the program will be affected. Okay, so the drawback in this approach is that any failure in any part of the single task will affect the total process. Since they are a continuous program. Okay, task one, task two, task three, interlinked with uh, each each step. Okay, it may lead to the failure of the system. That's why it is used in the uh, where the response is not uh, compulsory, not important, and the uh, where not critical applications. Okay, not critical, non-critical applications generally use the super based model. Next, use of hardware and software. The like watchdog timers helps in coming out from the loop when an expected failure occurs when the processor hangs up. So when the respect to you know uh, at this point of time when this respect of task must take. Okay, you know what is the function of the watchdog timer? It has to finish at 100 milliseconds. It has to finish. If not, we will generate a signal. So for these failures, we have to use in so called loop based model for such type of failures. We have to use an extra hardware or software such as watchdog timers. Okay. Then you will give a signal. Then the the program will be reset and it will be run again. Then the respective task will finish. This in turn may cause additional hardware cost and firmware overheads. Okay, firmware overhead means extra program and extra hardware cost are involved. So another major drawback of so called loop based approach is lack of real timeliness. Okay. Lack of real time it is not time critical. The response is not important. So it is not real time. 
Okay. It is not the response. The res if the response is exact, and you, if there are time critical application, it is said to be a real time embed system. Okay. The response is not important, and it is not time critical application. So there will be a lack of real timeliness. Okay. That's it about. That's it about embedded firmware design with respect to super loop based model. With respect to super loop based model. Now we will go to the we will go to second one that is embedded operating system based design. Okay, um, embedded firmware design approach. We are discussing complete discussion complete with respect to super loop based model. Second one is with respect to embedded operating system based design. Right, operating system based approach contains operating systems which can be either a GPOS means general purpose operating system or a RPOS real time operating system. Okay, the operating system which we use on Windows, Windows, Windows 7, Windows 10, whatever it is. Okay, those are general purpose operating systems. Okay, and there are some operating systems as real time operating systems RPOS. We have a unit on that. Okay, we have a unit based on real time operating system to host a user written application. Form. Okay. So the the, the approach contains OS based approach means we have to involve the operating system is involved. General purpose operating system means it it, it is used for n number of tasks, not dedicated. Embedded systems means dedicated. Okay, combination of hardware and software which is designed to perform a specific application on a specific task only. So for that we generally go to real time operating system. For example, ATM. Okay, automatic uh, teller machine also can be an operating system. It is Windows embedded platform, not Windows general purpose platform. It is a Windows embedded platform. We have, means that respect to OS is dedicated to work for only for that application, out of ATM application only. So it has the uh, defined inputs, defined outputs, defined functions. Okay, which are designed or developed with respect to the hardware and the application. Right. So the GPOS basic design is very similar to conventional PC based application development where the device contains an operating system like Windows. Okay. For desktop PCs, as you will be creating a running means general purpose operating system means there will be a desktop. Okay. There is some user interface is given, graphical user interface is given. Where you used to install n number of applications and you used to use n number of tasks. Okay. That's why it is a general purpose operating system. We are dedicated to only one application, it is an embedded operating system. For developing applications on top of the OS, the OS supports APIs are used. OS supported APIs means application program interfaces. Nothing but user interface on your mobile phone. Okay. Application program interface. Now in order to install some application, okay, there we need some interface, graphical user interface. So, in order to develop applications, we need the OS supported APIs. API means application program interface. Application program interface. In order to develop, in order to run some application, we need some interface. Okay, that is the application program interface. Similar to the different hardware specific drivers, OS based applications also require driver software for different hardware present on the board to communicate with them. Okay. Now in the in the present operating systems already different drivers are already involved. Okay, for, for example, take a printer, printer is a device. In order to run the printer device, you have to install the respect to printer software. Okay. That software is nothing but a device driver software or a driver software. Right. Real-time operating system based design approach is employed in embedded products demanding real-time response. This is important. Okay, demanding real time response. The response must be very, very less or in the defined time. Okay, in the respected time with the, with the minimum delay. Means it is what's in a real time environment. Our task responds in a timely and predictable manner to events. RT, RTOS, a real time operating system responds in a timely and predictable manner to events. Okay. Means with respect to time, and we can predict the time. At this time, it will it will finish. Okay, those are said to be real time. If you are using a real time operating system for embedded applications, okay, when we will choose a real time operating system, the system is complex. We have n number of inputs, n number of interrupts. There is a scheduling. Okay, 
okay there is an interrupt mechanism we have to give the priority priority order when all these are involved generally we go for a real time operating system so in place of writing a code we will use a real time operating system real time operating system contains a real time kernel kernel means in os the main part is about kernel you can know all the source code exists and the operations involved responsible for the performing preemptive multitasking you know what is in the preemptive non preemptive preemptive okay you know we'll go through these concepts in the real time operating system scheduling for scheduling the tasks multiple threads etc all these terms are with respect to real time operating system unit okay anyway preemptive means uh, preemptive means i can i can uh, if you get some interrupt you can uh, stop the task will go service and come back later so it should to be preemptive operating system non preemptive operating system means a task must not get interrupt okay so real time operation allows flexible scheduling of system resources like cpu memory and offers some way to communicate between the tasks okay these are all the uh, general uh, things uh, like resources you can access the resources like cpu memory registers the communication ports all these things a windows ce windows ce stands for consumer electronics ce psos vx works thread dc micro ce or os ip embedded linux symbian are examples of rt os employed in embedded product development generally these are all the embedded operating systems used in different uh, uh, atms okay windows ce generally we in atms we can see windows ce and many uh, basic phone operating systems okay in basic phone operating systems are mainly are symbian operating systems so mobile phones pdas personal assistants based on windows ce or windows mobile platforms handheld devices are examples of embedded products based on rt okay mp3 players okay mobile phones in all these things and these operating systems are involved so these are both two concepts okay that is with respect to first topic we have discussed about embedded embedded firmware design approach these are two type of approaches one is super loop model conventional procedural based firmware design second one is embedded operating system design first one is writing a following terms terms with respect to not to write some program or uh, taken a c program as example okay so for generally the super loop mo model is based in uh, uh, non real time and uh, where the response is not important in order to break the iteration generally we will go for a hardware reset and interrupt a session in order to do that generally we will involve uh, watch dog timers like that where then the hardware cost or the software cost firmware cost may increase okay we will discuss all these things then we have go uh, go through the uh, operating system based approach an operating system based approach we have gone through the general purpose operating system and mainly real time operating system so what are the real time operating systems involved what do you mean by an api okay and not to run the respective device we need a device driver software and the real time operating systems like uh, kernel which is an important part of an operating system okay and the next one is what is mean by a preemptive scheduling okay preemptive scheduling means a task can stop will go and return back and resume the task such type of scheduling is called preemptive scheduling multi tasking scheduler for that we will generally go for a real time operating system and these are all the real time operating systems involved okay windows ce consumer electronics okay mainly the symbian operating systems which included in most of the uh basic mobile phones operating system okay next topic is uh, embedded firmware development languages in the next class we will deal with this topic embedded firmware development languages thank you